Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 16, 2019. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Check out the 12 days of Christmas sale. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN and receive an additional $10 off the full Unleash Planner. Get your favorite denarian, the sense of security he or she deserves for Christmas. It is worth its weight in gold. Get your copy today. Time is running out. Be sure to follow me on both Facebook and Twitter as I started posting important articles there throughout the day. The links are in the description box below. Stay informed and stay alert. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. I would like to start out today with a soundbite that I find very exciting from today's field report on YouTube. The person speaking is Field McConnell from the Able Danger channel. I thought you would love to hear what he has to say. Some great news. Field, take it away. So apparently we have Field calling in. Please press one if you would like to accept this call. Otherwise, please hang up. You may now begin talking. Please note, this call may be monitored and recorded. Hello, Gordon. Hey, greetings, Field. We're uh, live on air. I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, not at all. In fact, uh, are you ready for some stunning news? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, here's a national scoop that I don't think you'll hear anywhere except right now here until Friday at the earliest. Uh, Friday is the 20th of December of 2019. And uh, I believe that numerous things will be either obvious or announced by Friday, the 20th of December. And among those things are the fact that uh, the United Kingdom is probably being ruled by the Privy Council with, with no input anymore from the fake royals. Uh, I would say that's good news. Uh, the, and by the way, all this good news is related to something that occurred on my birthday in 2013. Uh, but the UK royals, the fake royals, probably now are a memory. We'll find out soon. Uh, and of course, if they go, Social Security goes, the IRS goes, the American Bar Association, which is the attorneys, which is the flea bags who've been infesting the Congress. Uh, you know, for a long, long time, uh, they're going to go. So a lot of the, the wrongs in the United States of America are going to be righted. Uh, in this period, uh, between Friday the 13th, I think that's a significant day, Friday the 13th of December, uh, Napping Nancy and drooling uh, Nadler left Congress, and when they left, they presume they'd be coming back in January. I do not believe that's the case. That'll be worked out between now and January. But there probably won't be much need for them to reconvene uh, due to the arrests of the people in the Congress that have been associated with pedophilia and treason, or both. And in many cases, it's both. But uh, the UK royals, you know, they're sort of uh, out of the picture in favor of the Privy Council. And, for the people in Canada or the United Kingdom, Australia or New Zealand, uh, they probably understand Privy Council. And for the Americans or Europeans that are not familiar with Privy Council, it's spelled P-R-I-V-Y, and uh, it's the governing bodies of people that are supposed to be moral and correct. Uh, and apparently they are now. So that's one bit of good news. Uh, on the 20th of Je uh, December, that's this Friday, it should also be fairly apparent that there's a great upheaval going on in the Vatican, uh, especially the Jesuit-controlled pedophile portion of the Vatican. And uh, they've been a cancer that has been oppressing faithful people globally for 300 plus years. And that cancer is gonna be cured. Uh, Donald Trump, is currently the elected president of the United States of America. But Sunday, which was yesterday, Donald Trump and the Chinese elders signed an agreement to release the global reset and the Zimbabwe bonds and these other uh, 
elements, these uh, pieces of financial architecture that are going to reestablish the uh, global financial landscape. And one of the codicils, and I'm not smart enough, but Denise gives me five words to use every time I'm on the radio. And today, Denise told me to use codicil, C-O-D-I-C-I-L. And I thought that had to be some type of a over-the-counter medicine for an infection. But she said, no, it's not. Uh, so anyway, a codicil to this uh, global financial inversion, which helps free the people. And if you want to see what I mean by free the people, look at Luke 418 or Isaiah 61, where it talks about freeing prisoners like me or freeing the oppressed like everybody. Everybody in the world has been oppressed by the UK royals, the Vatican Jesuits, and the District of Cor the District of Columbia Corporation. And Trump has remedied that. And this should be leaking out. I mean, I'm leaking it right now, but I'm pretty good at leaking. Um, and in fact, if uh, I, if I have everybody's attention, I please, I please, please, please beg people to Google the group that I'm going to give you now uh, to prove what I'm saying is something I've been working on for seven plus years. Uh, the group contains these terms, cage, C-A-G-E, monster, M-O-N-S-T-E-R. So the first term is cage monster. The second term is pastel I-O-C, and I'm going to spell that, P-A-S-T-E-L, space. I thought you would like that. I listed Field's YouTube channel in the description of this video if you want to check him out. Let's get started. First article of interest for today, Calif, the Iraqi banking sector has a rich experience. A member of the board of directors of the Union of Arab Banks, chairman of the board of the Development Bank, Ziad Calif, announced that the Iraqi banking sector has a rich experience that made it exceed the political and security conditions and fluctuations. Calif said in his speech at the Arab Banking Conference that was held in Cairo, this conference is taking place under difficult exceptional circumstances that the entire region is going through, especially in the countries of Iraq and Lebanon, and that this conference is of great importance as it is taking place on the margins of these conditions and their economic and financial implications in order to address the resulting effects and the implications of the reality and course of our Arab banking sector. He added that the current conditions require us to exert all our efforts to set a roadmap aimed at mitigating the effects of the expected shocks that will be resolved in the economies of our countries as a matter of national and professional responsibility. Nationalism and the widening of the phenomenon of unemployment, so these circumstances require banks to adopt conservative policies and strategies in the field of credit and lending in addition to activating the roles of oversight departments in a significant way, and that contributes to reading the economic situation and to molly correctly and take the necessary measures and measures to activate contingency plans and alternative plans to ensure the continuity of the banking business and meet customer requests. He stressed that the political conflicts and the security instability experienced by a number of Arab countries, including my own, Iraq are a result of the deteriorating and critical economic conditions that many Arab societies, particularly the youth group, suffer from, as 30 million Arab citizens are below the poverty line and the unemployment rate in the Arab world. It is 10% versus 5% globally. He pointed out that banking in and of itself, regardless of time and place, necessarily implies risks, challenges and anxiety in order to objectively link to capital investments, which are characterized by an absolute sensitivity to political, economic and security fluctuations. And that the reality of the banking sector in Iraq and its rich experience through its confrontation with these conditions and political and security fluctuations and over the course of five decades where the banking sector went through many and various throats and was able to overcome them wisely and knowledgeable of the Iraqi banking leaders in cooperation with the Central Bank of Iraq, and despite the conditions and challenges that the banking sector faced, it was able out of its contract and its effects and what helped in achieving its successes is the strength, durability and solidity of the Iraqi economy, and because of its large and well-known wealth, 
which it is hoped to invest and manage properly during the next stage. He added that the skill of the banking leadership with inspiration and implementation of international banking standards issued by international banking institutions and follow-up to the periodic reports of the World Bank for Iraq made them overcome many difficulties, especially after legislation supportive, guaranteeing and immune to proper banking work, most notably the anti-money laundering and the financing of terrorism law, and other laws and instructions and the required standards. Caliph expressed his optimism about correcting the track and adopting the necessary reform programs to boost the economy and achieve the necessary economic development, as a result of the popular movement. A bright future awaits Iraq in particular, and the Arab world as a whole, with its great wealth requirements and the broad need to rebuild and rebuild with huge and massive investments. Next article of interest. Legal. Saleh has the freedom to choose the alternative of Abdul Mahdi without looking for the largest block. On Monday, legal expert Ali al-Tamimi said that the President of the Republic, Baram Saleh, has the freedom to choose an alternative to resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi without looking for the largest block, pointing out that the largest block ended after the nomination of Adel Abdul Mahdi for the post of Prime Minister. Al-Tamimi said in a statement to information that the largest block ended with the nomination of Adel Abdul Mahdi for the position of Prime Minister, and the President of the Republic today does not need to request the largest block to present a figure for the mentioned position. He added that the second candidate for the post of Prime Minister is not linked to his nomination with a larger or more block and therefore the President of the Republic is free to choose the personality he finds suitable for this position, after the resignation of the largest bloc candidate, Adel Abdul Mahdi. He explained that Article 76 of the Constitution and its paragraphs 1 and 2 mandates the President of the Republic, the candidate of the largest bloc that has emerged in the first session of Parliament, to form a government, while paragraph 3, 4 and 5 of the same article confirm that the President of the Republic assigns another candidate or alternative to the position of President of the Republic and if I fear the biggest bloc candidate. Next article of interest. Parliamentary economy. Contracts with China still exist and far from corruption. The Parliamentary Economic and Investment Committee confirmed, on Monday, that the Adel Abdul Mahdi government's contracts with China are still valid and have not been cancelled stating that these contracts are far from corruption after agreeing to hand over China to oil, not money. Committee member Nada Shaker Jowda said in a statement to information that Adel Abdul Mahdi's government contracts with Chinese companies have not been cancelled and are still valid, despite the government's resignation. She added that the projects that the Abdul Mahdi government contracted with China will be implemented in the coming period as there are preparations that always precede the start of projects. She explained that the agreement with China provides for the delivery of oil, not money, and therefore it is a positive step that keeps us away from corruption, and does not cost Iraq sums and funds from its budget, stressing that the breach of Iraq with China in the contracts concluded by the Abdul Mahdi government will cost Iraq the amounts of the penal terms. Next article of interest. Abdul Mahdi's office. The government will hand over its work duties to the President of the Republic next Thursday. On Sunday, the media office of the resigned Prime Minister announced the handing over of the work of the government to the President of the Republic next Thursday in the event that a candidate for the next government is not agreed in accordance with the Constitution. The media office spokesman, William Warda, said to information that the next cabinet session will be held naturally, as it is within the legal constitutional deadlines. He added that the constitutional period for the caretaker government ends next Thursday, noting that, in case there is no agreement on a candidate to head the next government, the government is legally obliged to hand over the functions of the cabinet to the President of the Republic, Baram Sali. On Sunday, the President of the Republic addressed the House of Representatives, asking them to name the largest bloc to present its candidate. Next article of interest. Big Fines for Dinar Auction Fraud Iraq's Commission of Integrity has revealed that it has concluded cases resulting in fines of more than 245 billion diners, 
$206 million on private banks due to violations relating to customs licenses and foreign currency auction instructions for 2012. The COI mentioned that one of these corruption cases related to a private bank smuggling foreign currency abroad by process of purchasing foreign currency to companies' interests under the pretext of importing goods. The office noted that upon investigation, it was found that the companies did not import goods to Iraq since 2004. The office clarified that the issues included some governmental and private banks when they committed fraud and entered the auction of selling currency in the names of companies and private account holders without their knowledge, and submitted invoices and forged import manifests. They also violated the instructions of the central bank when entering the auction pursuant to provisions of Article 3 of Money Laundering Law No. 93 from 2004. Next Article of Interest Economist, Iraq achieved about 90 trillion dinars in oil export revenues for 2019. Economic expert Majid al Suri announced, on Sunday, that Iraq achieved revenues from oil exports for 2019 of about 90 trillion dinars, stressing that those revenues did not cover the deficit in the budget for the current year. Al Suri told Al Ma Aluma that the estimated deficit in the 2019 budget is my guess and it is hoped that part of it will be blocked in case oil exports or the price of a barrel rise. He added that the price of the barrel remained volatile and the oil quantities approved in the budget did not exceed the ceiling and most months did not reach what was set, noting that the slight rise in oil prices from what was specified in the budget did not fill the deficit. He explained that the total oil revenue achieved by Iraq during the current year ranges between 80 to $86 billion, or approximately 90 trillion dinars. I would like to make a point here before we continue, is it just me or do we see Iraq using the term dinars much more than they used to in the past? From my experience over the past 16 years, it seems they are referring to the dinar much more often lately, as in the past year or so. They always used to just use the monetary references in dollars. I just wanted to point that out. Next article of interest. 1 million vacation. Kurdistan's internal cancel all licenses to bear arms. By decision of the Minister of Interior of the Kurdistan Regional Government, all licenses to bear arms in the region have been cancelled. Next article of interest. The Constitutional Committee reveals its next step in drafting the amendments. The Constitutional Amendments Committee held a meeting chaired by MP Fela Alsari the chairman of the committee, and the attendance of its members, today, Monday, to complete the discussion of the amendments to the paragraphs of the Constitution, while hosting the technical director of the Institute of International Law and Human Rights. A statement of the committee stated, Alfred News received a copy of it, that, during the 10th meeting held in the House of Representatives within the series of ongoing meetings, a review and discussion of many constitutional clauses within the sections of the basic principles, rights and freedoms as well as the study of proposals, ideas and visions submitted by representatives and experts and specialists in the fields of law, constitutional systems and citizens' proposals. He added, as the meeting presented a broad vision regarding the proposed amendments to mature them, to promote civil and political rights and freedoms, and to emphasize the consolidation of the concept of citizenship. He continued, the chairman of the Constitutional Amendments Committee also received MP Fela Alsari, technical director of the Institute of International Law and Human Rights, Mr. William Spencer at the headquarters of the committee, to discuss a number of points contained in the Constitution and ways of cooperation between the House of Representatives and the Institute of International Law to reach results that increase the impact of constitutional clauses in a manner more effective in serving the Iraqi people. In turn, the head of the committee expressed his welcome to the cooperation between the two sides, stressing that the committee is ready to receive all proposals and discuss them to reach more acceptable results. The parties agreed to involve two international experts specializing in writing constitutions to work with the committee and assist them in drafting the amendments. Like subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold and be sure to find me on Facebook and Twitter. 
so you don't miss a beat. Take advantage of the 12 days of Christmas sale before it's over. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN for the additional discount. Lock in your deal today. The link is in the description below. Stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Over and out for now. The Denarian.